Welcome to The Cantankerous Catholic with Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy. Listen to Joe tackle the really tough moral issues, current events, and politics from a Catholic perspective. Now here's Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy. Hello again, Sixpack family. Welcome back to The Cantankerous Catholic, episode 115. This is the final part of Raymond Leo Cardinal Burke's interview on the Cantankerous Catholic. In this episode, His Eminence speaks to Catholic men and their unique role in the Catholic Church. But he doesn't stop there. Do you have an apostolate you'd like other Catholics to learn about? Maybe you have an e-commerce business and you want to build sales while supporting a holy orthodox apostolate. Whatever you want to advertise, the Cantankerous Catholic is your portal to success. The Cantankerous Catholic is barely two years into broadcasting its weekly shows and we're already listened to in 77 countries, all 50 states, and 177 major cities throughout the U.S. and Canada. Our listener demographics are the most sought after for advertisers. The Cantankerous Catholic avatar is 53% men and 47% women, ages 18 to 34. The show's average growth rate through 2020 was 14% per week, and our listeners are Orthodox Catholics who reject heterodox Catholic positions and political correctness. Relative to other podcasts and online advertising, our rates are extremely cost-effective and inexpensive. You can advertise in each episode's show notes, in the recorded episode itself, our weekly newsletter that announces each new episode, all of these media together, or in any combination. So contact us today on the Sponsor Kit page on our website, cantankerouscatholic.com, or email Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy, directly at joe at cantankerouscatholic.com to learn how you can begin driving traffic to whatever you want to promote while helping to support a worthy, orthodox, and hard-hitting apostolate. Not only does his eminence speak to Catholic men and encourage them in a way that I haven't heard a bishop since the late Archbishop Fulton Sheen, but he also talks to us about the dangers of being lukewarm in our faith. He doesn't just tell us not to be lukewarm, but also tells us how to overcome being lukewarm. Cardinal Burke finishes by giving the six-pack family a special blessing. Let's listen. Uh, Your Eminence... The demographic of the 33,000 listeners in this audience is 61% Catholic men between the ages of 18 and 34. As your eminence knows, this is the audience that all Orthodox Catholic apostolates dream of attracting because young Catholic men seem to be considered second-class Catholics by many bishops who are more concerned with women and their role in the church. What does your eminence have to say to these young men to encourage them, and what are their unique responsibilities in the church? Well, first of all, be of good courage and, and be willing to, to fight for the call which our Lord is giving to you to give witness to him by your manhood. And uh, we should consider whatever is our sex, whether God created us male or female, to be a gift from God. And uh, those who are female have special gifts that are suited especially for the, the handing on of the faith. And so likewise, those who are called to be male. And in the church in a particular way in these recent decades, there's been a great suffering because in some way men have been made to feel like they're not important, that that somehow they're bad. And so what's happened is the important presence of fathers in the church, whether the fatherhood in the family, a fatherhood that comes through marriage, through being a husband uh, with your wife, procreating children, or the spiritual fatherhood of the priest. This has been under attack, and this is... uh, ultimately to the harm of us all. We hear today uh, about the suffering of a lot of of children and young people because of an absent father or because of a father who wasn't a true father, who didn't discipline them or who didn't spend time to teach them and to show them uh, how to be good and upright. 
And so you young men are tremendously important, uh, whether you're Paulus to the priesthood or, or to the married life or to the consecrated life. God has given you special gifts to reflect his fatherhood and to pass on the faith uh, and to defend the faith uh, as uh, a man uniquely can. And so do not be discouraged. Above all, treasure very much, come to know very deeply the, the great gift that God gave at creation when he created man, as the book of Genesis says, male and female, he created them. And so he intends the two sexes, and they're only two, no matter what crazy theories are going around today, are a reflection of, of God's life in our midst, of the, the divine love that he pours forth into our hearts. And so, so be encouraged and uh, develop as strongly as you can uh, those particular gifts which God has given to you as a man. Thank you, Eminence. Guys, did you hear this? Be encouraged. Don't be afraid. Assert your your role as genuine Catholic men in the church, and don't worry about what anybody else says or does. Even be willing to die for the truth of the faith and for your role as a man in the Catholic church. Okay, Eminence, finally a few weeks ago, we had Father Bill Casey. You know, he's the former Superior General of Fathers of Mercy. I think you yes, know Yes, I do. He was on the show talking about lukewarmness among both the clergy and the laity being the scourge of the church. What would your eminence say to this audience about lukewarmness? Lukewarmness uh, comes from a lack of of closeness to our Lord. It comes from uh, permitting permitting ourselves to drift away from our Lord, to become uh, lax, about our prayer, to become lax about our, our moral life, become lax about giving witness to the faith. And, uh, so we, we say as, we become, as they say, blended into the woodwork. And no one could uh, tell any difference but when we're present. No one could tell that there's a, a Christian present. Uh, that's, for us, completely wrong. And so we, we pray. In fact, our Lord said in the gospel, he said, would that you're either hot or cold. But he said, because you're lukewarm, I would vomit you from my, my mouth. In other words, the only way to be a, a good Catholic is to be, um, as we say, on fire for our faith and to be f- fully convinced that our Lord Jesus Christ is with us in the church for the salvation of the world that he's chosen us for, with all our weaknesses and with all our faults. He's chosen us to be his disciples and to be his co-workers in the, in the salvation of the world. And therefore, we, no matter how we may, how poor we may think we are, we aren't the most gifted person. That doesn't make any difference. We have the capacity to manifest the love of Christ in our lives and, uh, That we want to do. And uh, this season of Lent is a particularly strong time to deal with lukewarmness because through the practices of prayer and fasting and almsgiving, we address that drifting away in our lives and drifting away from our Lord. And we return to our Lord in a strong way. So take this time of Lent very seriously. You don't have to do a lot. But whatever you do for Lent in terms of more prayer, more fasting, more almsgiving, do it well. Put your heart and soul into it. And you'll be amazed how our Lord repays with so many graces in your life. We need today, above all, in a world that's so confused and there's there's so much evil all around us. We can't have lukewarm Catholics. We have to have uh, Catholics who are in fire for their faith, Catholics who are convinced that the salvation of the world comes through Jesus Christ alone and therefore are always willing to be strongly identified with him 
and to to make him known in everything that they're thinking and saying and doing. Thank you, Your Eminence. I appreciate that. Boy, <laughs> I hope you six pack family are listening to this because this is dynamite stuff. Your Eminence, this wasn't originally in my questions, but as I said, I've got 33,000 people listening to this and the podcast audience grows every single week. That's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Just, well, you know, God's, God's the one responsible for that. Imagining that you had those 33,000 in front of you right now, what would be the one thing you'd want to say to them more than any? Be close to our Lord Jesus Christ through your prayer, above all, but also coming to really know him through the, the truth that he teaches us, both in our own hearts, through our conscience, but also in the church. Do not fail to meet him, those of you who are Catholic, to meet him, especially in the sacraments of penance, of confession, and of the Holy Eucharist. And for those of you who are not Catholic, strive to, to meet him in whatever way you can to, uh, to know him uh, in his church. And what I wish for each one of you is eternal life. That's the, the best thing I can wish for you. And there's one way in which you will know eternal life, and that is by coming to know our Lord Jesus Christ and following him. So that is my great wish for you. Follow him in your prayer, sacramental life. Follow him in your, in your study of the faith, especially in catechism. And follow him by imitating him in a virtuous life in every way. Thank you, Eminence. You know, most of the six-pack family are very devoted to you. And they, you know, I have tried to urge them, especially when they question uh, about what to do because of the confusion and doubt, I urge them to follow you online as closely as they possibly can because you're going to always be 100% faithful to the faith. So with these things said, I'm wondering, would you consider coming back on the show sometime in the future? Yes, of course I would. And uh, I thank you for this opportunity to talk to so many wonderful people who who want to, to live strongly their faith, and then ask them to pray for me because I'm also a human being. And uh, while I want with all my heart to be faithful, to be a faithful shepherd, I need the help of prayer so that I don't go in the wrong direction. So please remember me in your prayers, and I'll be happy in the future, Joe, to talk with you again and talking with you, uh, talk to the whole big family that you've gathered. <laughs> Thank you, Eminence. Now, one final thing. Will you please be so kind as to give us your blessings yes. whenever that truck finishes going by? <laughs> you, you, you tell me, is it all right now? Yeah, it's fine now. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Your Thank Eminence. You, it's been great to have you on the show. I've known and loved Cardinal Burke for years. I've been privileged to have many private audiences where we could just relax, get to know one another, and where I would always learn from this great prelate. There's no one else I know that I'd say this about, but it only takes about five minutes alone with this man for you to realize you're in the presence of a saint. I've had friends over the years whose cause for sainthood is currently moving forward, such as Father John Harden that his eminence talked about last week. As obviously holy as they were in life, I've never known a man of this spiritual stature. Please remember to pray for Cardinal Burke, because I know of no other prelate who's under greater attack. Next week, we're going to have another special treat for you. We're going to be interviewing two men from the St. Paul Street Evangelization Apostolate. They are Brian Lee and Bob Wilson. I've never had more fun in an interview than with these guys. Don't miss it. Have you heard? 
a brand new translation of the Holy Bible is available for Catholics. Introducing the English Standard Version Catholic Edition, the most beautiful and readable Catholic translation of the Bible. If you've ever had difficulty reading the Bible or are looking for the perfect gift this holiday season, this is the Bible for you. The new translation includes changes to nearly 60,000 words from the Revised Standard Version and is the best combination of a literal translation written in smooth and readable English. Available in bonded leather, hardcover or softcover, the ESV Catholic Edition is a Bible you will love and a translation you can trust. To learn more about the ESV Catholic Edition or to purchase your copy, visit catholicbible.org. Again, that's www.catholicbible.org. Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy, wants to make sure you're informed about all the Catholic news you need to know. Here's Joe Sixpack's top five Catholic news picks for this episode. Catholic news pick number five. Hats off to LifeSite News. In a recent interview with Michelle Malkin, Dr. Simone Gold, founder of American Frontline Doctors, discussed the lack of authentic informed consent with regards to experimental vaccines, censorship as a crime against humanity, and how she was subjected to a massive SWAT team raid upon her home by the Federal Bureau of Investigation in order to arrest her for being present in the U.S. Capitol building on January 6th. You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. Catholic News Pick number four. Hats off to Breitbart News. Home prices across America surged in December, typically the slowest month for the housing market. Don't be enticed by low mortgage rates and the ease of buying a home. Double-digit inflation and record unemployment will hit in 2021. Now is the worst time to get a mortgage. That makes me sad. You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. Catholic, Catholic news, news pick, pick number three. three. Hats off to LifeSite News. A would-be mom was fired from her waitressing job after saying she needed to research COVID-19 vaccines before taking one. More fascism. Despicable! You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show note. Catholic, Catholic News Pick number two. Hats off to LifeSite News. Jailed Canadian pastor James Coates took direct aim at government-imposed COVID-19 restrictions in Alberta in his last sermon before being locked up, saying he refuses to give government what isn't theirs. He said the government has no jurisdiction to tell churches what to do, adding it should repent. That's awesome, dude! You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. Catholic Catholic News News Pick pick number one. one. Hats off to Catholic News Agency. The House passed the Equality Act in a 224 to 206 vote. The legislation would add sexual orientation and gender identity as protected classes under civil rights law. The bill would also eliminate religious liberty protections in the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993. The U.S. Bishops' Conference opposed the bill and said it would punish religious groups opposed to gender ideology. Well, they endorsed all of the Democratic candidates. What the hell did they think would happen? You're an idiot! You can read the whole story by clicking the link in my show notes. I am hard, but I am fair! It's time for the Catholic Boot Camp with your drill sergeant, Joe Sixpack. The Every Catholic Guy. Learn the Catholic faith and how to defend it like you've never heard it before. This boot camp is tough, so there's no political correctness, no spirit of Vatican II, and no namby-pamby platitudes. Drill Sergeant Joe Sixpack, the Every Catholic Guy, will prepare you for spiritual war. Now here's Joe Sixpack.
Ella Logan was a Scottish-born singer and actress who was famous in American pictures and early television. When she performed for the G.I.s in Italy, she kept one rule with ironclad resolve. There would never be anything in her show the least bit off-color. She wore simple dresses, which would remind the soldiers of their sweethearts, wives, and sisters. One night in Naples, the theater was packed. Many of the men attending had just returned from the front line. They were so fresh from battle that they were on edge, dirty, and, in some cases, even bloody. After Ella made her usual little speech at the end of her act, a tall G.I. with a Gary Cooper-like persona walked up to her on the stage. He asked, Can I talk into that thing? Pointing at the microphone. The soldier still had his helmet on and looked exhausted. Ella was apprehensive because a man in that G.I. state was subject to say or do anything. Looking up at him, she stood beside him at the microphone. He put his hand on her shoulder and began to speak to her before the absolutely silent 5,000 men present in the auditorium. Miss Logan, he said into the microphone, you don't remind me of my wife or sister. You don't even remind me of my mother. Do you know what you remind me of? Ella trembled as she waited for the soldier to answer his own question. He said, you remind me of an angel. He bent over and kissed Ella on the forehead. Then the lanky soldier walked down the steps, up the aisle, and into the darkness. While he walked away, no one in the crowd broke silence. Ella ran into her dressing room and cried tears of joy. Ella Logan understood the virtue of modesty. She not only understood that a modest dress is a violation of God's sixth commandment, but after this incident, she also understood that modesty earns far more respect from men than trying to look sexy. We live in a sexually saturated society and culture. Progressive thinking people tell us that this isn't the Ozzy and Harriet era anymore, that we're liberated from those old stuffy rules of propriety and etiquette. Business communications and technology change with progress, as do styles in architecture or automobiles. But God's law never changes. Today we flaunt our sexuality, making ourselves as appealing to the opposite sex, and oftentimes the same sex, as possible. Men dress always as if they're going to a picnic, no longer looking like gentlemen. Women dress as though they're trying to get every man's attention even at church. It's time they realize that this is a violation of God's law and take Ellen Logan's example to heart. This is our first treatment of the Sixth and Ninth Commandments. They are, you shall not commit adultery and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, respectively. They're usually treated together by moral theologians and catechists because they both deal with human sexuality. The Sixth Commandment deals with external sexual purity, that is, the things we do. The Ninth Commandment deals with interior sexual purity, that is, the things we think. Let's begin with the Sixth Commandment. The Sixth Commandment obliges us to be pure and modest in behavior both when alone and with others. It forbids impurity and immodest behavior and everything that leads to impurity. Some of the sins committed against the Sixth Commandment are adultery, fornication, contraception, homosexual activity, prostitution, premarital sex, masturbation, and pornography. Fornication is sexual intercourse between an unmarried man and an unmarried woman. Adultery is sexual intercourse between two persons, at least one of whom is married. These are always mortal sins. Contraception is also always mortally sinful because it rejects chaste married love and defies God by wanting to increase pleasure while avoiding the God-given responsibility of procreating children. Furthermore, the irresponsible use of sex through contraception leads to a lack of respect for sex itself, the marriage partner as a person, and human life. It has contributed immensely to the culture of death, just as Pope Paul VI predicted in his 1968 encyclical, Humanae Vitae. 
The most common contraceptive is the birth control pill, or simply the pill. The pill is morally, ethically, and medically evil. Research has proven that it condemns women to premature death. It not only works to impede the conception of children, but it is also proven to be an abortifacient, destroying life in the womb. Indeed, it's been scientifically proven that all chemical contraceptives are abortifacient. Through the use of the pill, many women have unknowingly and unintentionally aborted children they didn't even know they had. Furthermore, use of the pill, as well as other contraceptives, leads people into other immoral sexual activities and most certainly lead to eternal punishment in hell. There are, however, natural means of birth control that don't offend God. Natural family planning, also called NFP, refers to several methods that are in conformity with the biological harmonies God's impressed upon the human nature. These methods use no gadgets nor chemicals. They're based on sound scientific knowledge, and they're completely harmless, reliable, and healthy. We won't discuss them today because we lack the time, but we will cover NFP rather deeply in the future, along with a few recommendations for more information and help for couples. In the meantime, if you're interested in a manual on NFP, I'd strongly recommend one published and available as a free download from Natural Family Planning International. You can download the manual at NFP and more. There's a link in my show notes. Rightly used, NFP is morally and religiously acceptable. What I mean by rightly used is that NFP requires the use of intelligence and self-control, and it should only be used when married people have serious and legitimate motives for spacing out births. Some serious reasons for spacing out births may come from physical or psychological conditions of the husband and wife or from other external conditions. However, selfishness is a sinful motive. I'm a convert to Catholicism, and my parents weren't at all religious. My father was a selfish man who didn't even like children, and most certainly didn't want to be bothered by them. Don't misunderstand, my father loved both of us kids, but he never wanted the responsibility of being a dad. I recall him telling me once that he wouldn't take a hundred million dollars from me, but that he wouldn't give a plug nickel for another one just like me. I also recall when I was a little boy overhearing my mother telling some of her friends that I was a mistake. She meant that I was unplanned, but that isn't how a little boy heard and understood it. What sort of message does that send to a kid? Worse, these attitudes demonstrate the throwaway attitude artificial contraception promotes in the thinking of married couples. I've been sharing the faith with people for over 30 years. The Holy Spirit has used me to make hundreds of converts and 84 of them are my adult godchildren. When the Holy Spirit works through us in a big way, He usually uses the talents given to us before we were even born. When we develop those talents for Him, we're often impelled to pass on to others what we've done and how we've done it for the greater glory of God. That's why I wrote the Lay Evangelist Handbook. You might say the Lay Evangelist Handbook was 30 years in the making, because in this book I share with you all the best that I've learned about how to share the faith with laps and non-Catholics so you can bring your friends and family to the fullness of divinely revealed truth. The very first chapter gives you a thorough explanation of the things you need to do to maximize your effectiveness so you won't end up with egg on your face when trying to engage people. I explain the differences between the various types of lay evangelists and others you can learn from. I even talk about some statistics that should help give you a real sense of urgency for sharing the faith. Then I get to the step-by-step process for sharing the faith. I give a full presentation of the exact text I've used and refined for 30 years. I tell you what to do, what to say, and how to do and say it, while leaving room for you to work in your own personality and make these techniques your own. There's no other book like this on the market. 
So get your print or ebook copy of the Lay Evangelist Handbook today. It's available in print on cantankerouscatholic.com or in print and ebook on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. The Catholic Church is 2,000 years old. A lot of wisdom is gained over two millennia. Each week we'll share some of that wisdom with a Catholic quote. So here's this week's Catholic quote. This week's Catholic quote is from St. Carlo Borromeo. He said, Be sure that you first preach by the way you live. If you do not, people will notice that you say one thing but live otherwise, and your words will bring only cynical laughter and a derisive shake of the head. I believe a really great way to teach the faith is through stories, parables, and anecdotes. So here's today's story. In the 18th century, there lived a famous potter named Josiah Wedgwood. His company still exists today, and its products are coveted. Wedgwood was especially known for his beautiful vases. One day, a wealthy customer came into his shop. Wedgwood asked his office boy, a 15-year-old lad, to show the visitor through the plant. The stranger was just as filthy in his talk as he was rich. He cursed and swore. At first, the lad was shocked, but gradually began to laugh at the guest's remarks. Accidentally, Wedgwood heard some of the off-color conversation. The potter picked up an unusually beautiful vase. He called attention to the variety of colors and intricate designs. The visitor was delighted. He reached for the vase to look at it himself. Just as he touched it, the potter let it fall to the ground on purpose. The precious work of art smashed into hundreds of pieces. What's the idea, shouted the visitor. I wanted to buy that vase. Wedgwood replied sternly, Friend, there are things more precious than any vase, things that can never be restored once they are ruined. I can make another vase like that, but you can never make another clean heart, another simple faith like that you've taken away from this boy working with me. Scandal means any action, word, or omission which can or does cause another to commit sin. To destroy a soul is much worse than to destroy a vase or even a body. You can't expect others to see you as good when you yourself are wicked. Under the Constitution, established law, and historic precedent, members of both houses of Congress and Vice President Pence could have saved our Constitutional Democratic Republic on January 6th, but they didn't. They could have stood up to fight for us, but they chose not to. Every one of these people are guilty of treason against the Constitution and the people of the United States of America. This has nothing to do with Trump losing the election, but rather the integrity of our elections and defending the Constitution. Therefore, until I finish the list, every week I'll tell you who those Republican traitors are, five at a time. Then it's up to you to defeat these folks during the primaries in the voting booth so they're thrown out of office. They don't even deserve to be American citizens, much less members of Congress. This week's list of traitors include Senator Cynthia Loomis of Wyoming, Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky. Boy, I'm glad he's finally getting out. Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas. Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. She's never even been a rhino. She's always been more Democrat than Republican. And Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky. This one kind of surprised This has been the Cantankerous Catholic with Joe Sixpack, the every Catholic guy. Thanks for subscribing. And be sure to visit cantankerouscatholic.com to get your free copy of Joe's popular book, The Best of What We Believe, Why We Believe It. 